So, welcome everyone, my name is Christine and today I'll be talking about rapidly verifiable XMSS signatures. Um, this is joint work with Joppe Bos, Andreas Hulzing and Joe Sones. So as an introduction, let me uh, first set the setting. So we have Alice, who wants to send a message to Bob, namely to meet for drinks at four, and to make sure that Bob can verify that this message actually comes from Alice, she signs it with some signature scheme. She then sends the result along a secure channel to Bob, and Bob can take this signature and verify it against Alice's certificate to make sure that the um, that the message really came from Alice and not, not some other person. So this is a, quite a simple setting. In reality, it can be a bit more complicated. So for instance, Alice can be a large company um, who wants to send a new firmware image to all their devices. To make sure these devices can verify that the firmware image actually came from company Alice, they sign it with some signature scheme and send it over a secure channel. But now in this case Bob is not one person, but actually many IoT devices, so this, uh, this message is sent along many secure channels. But then all these devices do verify the same signature against the same public key certificate to verify the authenticity. And this, this scenario, this setting is our use case. So we have one signature and many IoT devices verifying it. And beyond the firmware updates that were just sketched in the, in the previous slide, another situation where, where this use case applies is that of secure boot. So it's, it's a pretty relevant use case and used in many devices. And in this use case, the signer actually has access to significant computational resources. Since a, a large company can use the cloud or a computation farm to, to set their signature. While on the other hand, the, the verifier might be some constrained device and they might not have these computational resources and therefore it might be advantageous to, if possible, put more of the computational load on the signer and not the verifier. And in this work, we specifically look at the case of XMSS. So can this trade-off be made possible for a standardized post-quantum digital signature scheme like XMSS? We start with an executive summary that basically says, uh, yes, we can. Um, to add a little bit more detail here, in this work, we actually present a faster XMSS signature verification um, with the aim at the, the use case I just sketched on embedded devices. And to achieve this faster verification, we use a probabilistic method, which was introduced by uh, Perrin, Sembonen, Martins, Custodio and Martina in 2018. Um, but we extend our work by various avenues, namely we add a security proof that adding their technique to XMSS actually means it's still secure, as well as we add a statistical analysis to, to show what the performance of the method is. Then Along the way of creating this security proof, uh, our work actually also fills a previous gap in the XMSS proof, um, which shows resistance against mitigating multi-target detects against the scheme. And lastly, in the paper, we show that using a wrapper function around XMSS, actually our scheme is still compatible with RC. Then, Given these things, we also implement our scheme and our paper shows that combining these things with further known optimizations, it allows uh, for trade-off of a signature generation of about a minute on an x86 in core can expect a speed-up factor of over two for the verifier if it's a small embedded device, uh, an ARM Cortex-M4. And of course, we show other trade-offs are possible, but just as an executive summary, um, this is 
quite a quite a nice achievement. Then what will I talk about in the remainder of this talk? Well, first of all, I'll talk a bit about what XMSS is, namely a stateful hash-based signature scheme. Um, then to show the, the techniques that are used, I'll explain how one-time signatures work and how specifically Winternet's one-time signatures work. Before diving into the contributions of our paper, namely wrapper verifiable signatures where I'll first show how the algorithm works and how it incorporates the work of PZ and CM. Then I'll give a brief outline of the security proof and go into some of the things we did to analyze the performance of the rapidly verifiable algorithm before I end with results and a conclusion. So then first stateful hash-based schemes. So XMSS or Extended Merkle Signature Scheme, it works as follows. So we start from a one-time signature key pair depicted here down below where a signer creates one private key, computes the correspondent public key and can sign one message with it. Well, this is fine, but now if the signer has to do that many times and sign many messages, they have to make many key pairs. Um, and publicizing all these public keys is of course not very convenient. So in the 70s, Ralph Merkel came with the idea of a Merkle tree. And the Merkle tree sort of solves this problem by posing that you can take this one-time uh, signature public key and hash it into a binary Merkle tree as a leaf node. And then what you can do is pairwise hash all these nodes together until there is one uh, top node, the public key of the Merkle signature scheme, um, which can then serve as a public key for all eight one-time signatures. And this changes a bit what the signature looks like. So for a one-time signature pair, which we saw here on the left, uh, we just had uh, OTS signature zero, but the Merkle scheme or XMSS in this case also adds the state uh, as in the signature so that the verifier knows which leaf of the Merkle tree is being signed with, as well as an authentication path. And the goal of an authentication path is that it's a set of nodes in the Merkle tree here depicted in red such that if a verifier uh, computes the one-time signature public key, they can then, in order, hash the hash values with the authentication path to recover a candidate for the public key, which can then be checked against the public key of the Merkle scheme. So in summary, uh, a one-time signature scheme has one secret key, one public key, and can sign one, one signature, um, which is for most applications pretty impractical. And XMSS and other schemes like uh, LMS uh, or others combine these one-time signatures into a larger scheme using Merkle trees. And as a result, for a uh, height H Merkle tree, which is uh, the number of layers in the Merkle tree and a parameter. Um, each one-time signature can sign one message, but they can all verify against the same public key. And the nice thing about these schemes is that they're already standardized by NIST in a, in a special publication that can be seen on the left here. So after uh, the grand scheme of things, we move to these one-time signatures. So how do Winternet's one-time signatures actually work? Well, if we have a m-bit message digest m of a certain message that needs to be signed, the observation is you can actually write it, uh, rewrite it in a base w representation. So we take the m bits and split them up into L1 chunks of size W. And then L1 would be equal to the 
the bit length of the message digest divided by the bit length of W. So this is quite some notation, but as an example, if we want to write 37 in base 4, then what we do is we take the bit representation and simply split it up into chunks of 2, uh, since that's 4 values being represented. And then a simplified uh, view on the key generation of uh, Winternet's one-time signature scheme is that we have a hash function h. We generate uh, a, a secret key for each of these base w chunks that can be in the mbit uh, in the mbit message digest, and we simply apply the hash function to each of these secret keys. And we do not do that once. Now we repeat that, and we repeat that specifically w minus one times to get the public key of the Winternet's one-time signature. So this seems uh, pretty simple, um, but once we have these secret keys and public keys, we of course want to sign the message with them. So how this works is as follows. We have this message digest m here at the top, and we also split that up into these w base bit um, chunks, let's say. And then I'm simplifying a little because for Winternet's one-time signature, actually you would uh, chuck an, another few chunks behind that, namely the checksum. And the goal of this checksum is to prevent forgeries. So I won't give any details on it, but um, just assume that it's a, a few more uh, a few more chunks being put behind here. And now we want to sign, so we have our secret key, which are these nodes in the beginning, each one um, from 1 up till L. And now if we want to sign, uh, sign a message, we start at the, the first base W value, and we map this value to a place in the secret key one chain and specifically for instance if this value is uh, three then we would compute the the third node after the secret key with this value and we repeat this process for all chunks so b2 b3 up to bl which is also here the the eighth value in the chain and this is then our signature So this looks pretty simple. Um, then the question remains is how to verify this signature. So this would work as follows. The verifier knows the message, knows the internet's constant, knows the signature public and the public key, uh, as well as the hash function. And what they can do is then also chunk the message digest up in the same manner as the signer did, map it to the the chains where the verifier does not know these previous versions where the signer did. And then they can just start applying the hash function. So for S1, they can apply H again and again, and they apply W minus one minus the value of B1 times, because applying the hash function this many times is supposed to lead to the public key one. And this can again be repeated for all chunks, so also for sigma L, you go all the way to the end, and then you verify against the public key. Quite simple. So that was the details about what's plus that we need to know. And now we can actually move to the contributions of our paper, which are rapidly verifiable signatures. And before showing you the algorithm, the adapted XMSS algorithm, uh, we present, um, we first want to give the idea of, uh, of the underlying technique, which is as follows. Namely, the cost of verification of a Watts plus signature is actually largely determined by the value of the L1 integers B1 up to BL1. So, here B1 was the fourth node in chain and the verifier actually has to compute 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hash functions to have something to verify against the public key. Now for the verifier, it would be much easier if this value was actually towards the end of the chain and they would only have to do a few hash functions. Well, this is where Winternet's tuning comes in. So PZMC18 observed that these B1 up to BL1 values are determined by the base W representation of the message digest. And we cannot just change the output of a hash function, um, but what we, what we can do and what they show in PZMC18 is that by adding a counter in the message hash, and not just one counter, but t different counters, you get a different output m. And by appending that counter and then choosing the, the chain values that you like best, so the ones that have the least verification time, and therefore the ones that maximize the cumulative chain length, if you choose this message, then verification time goes down. And this is quite a nice observation. Uh, and in the work, and what I'll talk to in, about in the next slide, we fill in some gaps of this paper, namely uh, the message length dependence, which we show you don't need. Um, in our work, we also provide a thorough security analysis that show that applying this technique in specifically XMSS does not degrade security. As well as we give a performance analysis, so we analyze what kind of effect choosing different uh, values for T has. And lastly, we also apply it to the XMSS implementation. So first, the XMSS adapted algorithm, which is shown uh, here in the middle and an algorithm one in the paper. I won't go through this in detail, but I will just highlight that uh, this block in blue, that's where in the algorithm we apply the core idea of PCMC18, MCM18 to XMSS. So we add these T counters to the ash and determine which of these counters results in the best values and the best time or the, the lowest time for a verifier, which is what we want. And this is also where we include this message length independence that we add. So we show that this adding these counters can actually be done really fast, even for large messages, by only iterating over the last hash block. So if we straightforwardly apply the technique of PCMCM18, then for large messages and applying these many counters, it would fast turn into a huge signature generation time for large values of t. While we show that if we uh, only iterate over the last hash block, then with this pre-computation, then actually the signing time remains constant for, the, for a given message size, which is a uh, huge progress. The next contribution is uh, the answering the question, is it still secure? So the answer here is, again, straightforwardly, yes, it's still secure. And as a high-level proof outline in the paper, we first analyze what impact adding this counter has to the, to the message hash construction for XMSS type signatures. Um, and then after analyzing this, we formulate the necessary security assumptions on these hash functions as a standard model property. And given, given these, uh, this pre-work, we can then analyze the complexity of generic attacks against, against the scheme and provide a bound for black box attacks against the random function. Um, yeah, so I won't go in further details for the proof. Details can be found in the paper. But what be, might be nice to mention is that uh, while constructing the proof for our technique, we also fill a previous gap in the XMSS proof um, that shows multi-target attack resistance. Then 
then uh, on a performance analysis level um, so given this that the signature uh, generation and verification scheme for an implementer it might be a question in, on how to set t and what kind of performance can we expect then and we do this in two ways in the paper the first way is that we in a simplified model prove the number of hashes an implementer can expect for a given set t and again the, the theorem here is on the top left and i won't go into the full proof but the idea is that we first by the central limit theorem model the length of of the commutative l1 chain lengths and then given this distribution we use order statistics to determine the expectation of the maximum over t counters so if we have t times these average chain lengths what do we expect the maximum to be and then lastly we trade the the chain lengths for the checksum a bit differently since uh, as you can read in the paper they behave in a kind of special way um, but then we show that all three of these are quite solid assumptions uh, in the paper and yeah you can see that there then beyond averages uh, since for an implementer it might also be useful what is the maximum and minimum performance they can accept we also give confidence intervals uh, for the expectation so we see that here on the left so for instance what you can see here is that if an implementer were to add uh, 2 to the power 40 counters to their hash message uh, then we expect with um, I think 95% confidence that the number of hashes for the verifier would lie between about 250 and 300 and a bit where previously it was around 500 then lastly we verified uh, the performance of our rapidly verifiable xmss version and uh, these results come from an adaptation we made of the reference implementation uh, which we ran on a freedom k64 board um, this is a cortex m4 development board uh, which gave us the following results namely here on the left we see a table with the trade-off between the signature generation time and the verification time by adding the counters so for instance here on the left if uh, if a signer adds 2 to the power 32 counters which makes the signing time about an hour then they can expect to have a performance gain for the verifier between 40 and 50 percent which is quite good and then in cycles on this freedom board we see that compared to the reference implementation and also adding some pre-computation tricks from ckrs20 we can actually get um, given a signing time of about a minute we can get these 13.8 million cycles down to about 6.56 million cycles which is a, a huge performance gain So that's what I wanted to show you about our paper and um, that leaves us with a conclusion. So in conclusion we utilize the techniques of PCMCM18 to enable a, a rapidly verifiable version of XMSS and we thoroughly analyze both the security and performance of the new scheme. Then uh, we also implement this rapid XMSS on a Freedom K64 app board and as an example I mean I've mentioned before other trade-offs are possible that on a, if we sign on a single core x86 86 machine um, then you can verify the signature 2.11 times faster than the reference implementation on an embedded device and this translates to about a verification time of 54 milliseconds which is actually quite practical and as mentioned before it's a, a standardized signature algorithm so that's quite nice 
And then lastly, we'd like to mention that the results straightforwardly apply as well to the multi-tree version of XMSS, as well as uh, a variant or a similar hash-based construction LMS and its multi-tree variant HSS. That, uh, that, uh, that brings me to the end of the talk. So if there are any questions, you can contact us at this email address. And uh, other than that, thank you very much for listening.